Hi, I'm Matt from Hack Mixed Reality, and today we're going to use OBS to composite manually a mixed reality scene. So you can turn this into this. Oh man. So this is the software you're going to need to do the compositing. Firstly, you'll need OBS, which is here, and you'll also need a plugin for OBS called StreamFX. I've put a link to that down in the description down below, uh, so go and uh, pick that up from there. And you'll see that StreamFX is installed on your system because the StreamFX menu will appear at the top of OBS. So what do we need to composite? Well, we'll need the background, we'll need the keyed camera, and we'll need the foreground. The background scene is pretty easy. That's because there's no keying involved in that, it's just the full image. There's loads of tutorials out there for the keying of the live action camera, so I'll let you look that one up yourself. And then there's the foreground, where all the effort really comes into this. So this will be your typical quadrant view output from a game that supports mixed reality capture, but not natively through live. You'll see from the four quadrants here, we've got a background image and a foreground image, which are the two things we want. We've also got the headset view down at the bottom right, and then this weird black and white image at the top right, which is technically the alpha channel. That is going to give us some information about transparency within the foreground image. So I'm going to start off with a blank slate in OBS, a fresh scene collection, and we're going to bring in our quadrant output into here. And what I'll do is I'll just uh, go onto the properties on that and loop that so uh, we can continue working with it. What we now need to do is to chop this into the respective images that we need to use in order to make this work. So as the title card says, scenes can be your friend here. OBS doesn't really like grabbing or hooking the same window twice, so therefore where we've got it in this single quadrant view here, we can use this scene that we've got here as the one that we're going to then use to split up in another scene in order to composite this together. So let's rename this something like quadrant view. What we can then do is to create multiple scenes from this single quadrant view in order to be able to composite those multiple scenes together into a final output. So let's create our first scene here and call this background, or just BG for short. And then I can add that quadrant view to this scene. What we'll then do is use a transform on this in order to just get that bottom left part of the screen. So we'll need to do two things on here. Firstly, what we'll need to do is to double the size of each of the, these dimensions. And I've just put the cheat sheet uh, numbers for that up on the screen. So this is 3840 and then 2160. And you can see that quadrant now fills the entire screen, but actually it's only the top left quadrant. Now what we need to do is move down to the cropping down here in order to crop that back down to the right size so that we are only left with the bottom left quadrant of this. However, even though we've doubled the size of this image, we still need to do the cropping based on the size of the original image. So therefore I'm going to need to crop that from the top by half of the figures. So this is going to be 540 and then I want to crop out the right hand side as well so that is going to be 960. There we go. I can close that and that is our just our background image. So now we can do this again for the other quadrants. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to duplicate this existing scene uh, to save a bit of time and this first one I'm going to duplicate I'm going to call it foreground and I'm going to call that keyed and you'll see why in a moment. For the transform we'll go back into here to edit this 
and instead of cropping the top there, we'll crop the bottom instead. And there we go, that's our foreground scene. Now technically, because we have just the foreground and background here, and we can key this out using the color black in this instance, this might be all that we actually need in here. So for our first attempt at this, this is all I'm gonna do, and I'll come back to apply the alpha channel slightly later. So let's create our output scene. We'll call this composited output. And add both our foreground and background scene to this. Now, of course, we're still seeing the black on the foreground scene, so we'll have to use a color key in this first instance in order to remove that transparent area. To do that, we can click on filters, add a color key, and select a custom color, which in this case is gonna be black. And you'll see that turns that section of it transparent. Closing this now, we can see we've now got our transparency happening on there, but you might be able to notice at certain points there is a little black line on the border of certain objects that are between the foreground and the background, uh, which is most noticeable down at the bottom here when moving backwards and forwards. This is possibly good enough for a first attempt, but let's get our keyed camera in here to show how this works anyway. Let me just put a uh, filter on that to cut out the white Perfect. And now if I move that between the two layers, you should see that I can peek out from behind the tree and from behind the controllers as well. So this might be good for a first stab. However, if we want to remove those additional lines that you've got on there that delineate between the foreground and the background part of it to make that a little bit smoother, to make it more seamless, we're going to need to use a technique called alpha matting. And this is where that fourth quadrant at the top right of our quadrant view and the StreamFX plugin is going to assist us. Let's duplicate our keyed foreground and call that alpha. And we'll also want to remove for now the filter that we've got on this scene for the color key. So we're going to use a different method. We also want to capture that alpha channel. So one more duplicate. And change the transform on this to capture the top right instead of the top left. There we go. Now that we've got the alpha channel captured, what we'll do is we'll go back to our composited output and we'll add in a scene here for the foreground alpha. To this, we're going to want to add a filter. And if you've got StreamFX installed, then you'll be able to add a dynamic mask. The source of our mask we'll be able to choose from the drop down list here is the alpha channel that we just added. And you should see that when we do that, immediately nothing happens. What we need to do is to scroll down through all the various channels here, red, green, and blue, until we get to the alpha channel at the bottom here. And down in this alpha channel, I'll need to put in some quite specific values that I've hand tweaked uh, in order to get the best blend of cutting out the little black lines in there and being able to actually have the transparency work as well. So the figures that I'm about to put in, I'll leave down in the description below so you can copy paste them. Also, they should be hopefully easily visible on screen. So if I put negative one in there, you'll see everything is visible now. And as I start to put in the other values, then you should see that it starts becoming slightly better on here. And then my alpha input value of negative 94 seems to do a decent job of removing those lines on there. Uh, you may need to play around with that for different outputs accordingly. 
So we can see from this one that we set the transparency perhaps a little bit too aggressive, it's a little bit sparkly up there on the screen. We can then go back into the filter and play around with this alpha input value. Uh, let's move that down to what, 91, something like that. Does that look a bit better up there? Maybe that does. Let's close that. I think maybe that's, yeah, that's a bit closer to perhaps where we need to be. So that's around where you can uh, fine tune how that looks on your stream. Now that you've got your composited output scene, you can add that to whatever your main stream scene is with all your overlays and what have you. And then that's your output. The more mathematically minded among you may have noticed that actually, because we're taking a quarter of the screen each time, this whole output scene is indeed in 540p, which is good enough for some instances, scales all right to 720p if you're streaming at that resolution, but you may want to scale up to full 1080p if your computer is able to handle it. Mine probably isn't. As I've already mentioned, OBS doesn't really like hooking the same game twice. So what do we do in order to resolve that? So if you have a 4K monitor, or if you're able to use some upscaling technology in order to fool your game that it's running in 4K, what you can do with OBS is to be able to capture the full screen for those three quarters of the screen, and then composite those using just the direct screen capture rather than the game or window output. The resulting output from that will of course be full 1080p, but will be commensurately more taxing on your computer. So that's it, I hope that's been useful in order to get you compositing all of your mixed reality games manually, should you need to. If you've got any suggestions for how to make this process even easier, please leave them down in the comments below. And if you think this has helped you, please give us a thumbs up and uh, subscribe for more things like this. Thanks very much, everyone. See you next time.